Amen. Hallelujah. Well, those of you that were here last week know that some sermons are so long it takes two weeks to preach them. Or maybe if you watched it on YouTube. But we started our sermon last week in Isaiah the 40th chapter. And as I made mention of last week, I'll mention again this morning that uh, it sure has been a rough road to hoe uh, the last few weeks. But during that time, even in the midst of the struggle and the pain and the sorrow, Brother Bruce, I have found great comfort in God's Word. Amen. 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 And that's really what this sermon is all about. And that's what I got from as I was reading the 40th chapter of Isaiah. That is what I gleaned from it was comfort. And in this chapter, there are five comforts that, that jumped off the page at me. I'm sure you can read it and get something different. Isn't it wonder how the, wonderful how the Word of God is, is so deep, the bottom can never be found? It is so high, you can never reach the height. It is so wide that you can never span its existence. It is, it, there's always something new. There's always something new. You know, you can read a man-written book. Well, and you're done with it. I've read that one. But God's Word, no matter how many years you read it, there's always something fresh and something new in God's Word for us to find. Amen. That's why I said that you do your, yourself a great dis, dis, uh, you do yourself a great disservice if you do not feed upon the Word of God every day. If you do not make it a part of your life, it, it, you do yourself a great disservice, and you do your soul a, a great detriment. Because it is, it'll help you. Amen? It'll help you. God's Word will help you through the hard times. It'll give you comfort when you need comfort. When you turn to God's Word. And like I told you, I can tell you words of comfort and I can pat you on the back and hug your neck and I can cry with you. I can weep with you. I can talk with you. But true comfort can only be found within the pages of God's Word. Hallelujah. As the great comforter, the Holy Spirit, comforts you through the Word of God. But we began last week and we looked at three of the five comforts in Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Going to do a little quick review, but not going to stay on it very long. So if you want to know the entirety of it, you're going to have to uh, either get the CD when I make copies or you're going to have to, to uh, go on YouTube. And check it out. But Isaiah the 40th chapter, begin the first verse. The Bible says, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. And of course we know comfort means to give peace. It means to give rest. It means to hold up. It's, it's got a lot of different definitions. But verse 2 says, Speak ye comfortably. And that means to speak comfort to one's heart. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her. Now this was our first comfort that we found in the 40th chapter here in the book, the great book of Isaiah. The first comfort that we found was that our warfare is accomplished. The work has been finished. In the second verse it says to speak comfortably that her warfare is accomplished. That her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received the of the Lord's hand the double for all her sins. And we talked about what a comfort it is to know that we have been forgiven of our iniquity. We have been pardoned. The debt has been paid. The price has been paid. We have received double the mercy. Double the forgiveness. Double the blessing. We have received double of the Lord's hand. Where sin did abound in our lives. Brother Jim gave his testimony this morning. Every one of us in here this morning could give a testimony. Where at times in our lives where sin did abound. God's grace was greater. Amen. Amen. God's grace was greater. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're on your way to heaven today because God's grace is greater than the sin that had you bound. Than the sin that had you captive. And we can rest and and bring comfort this morning in the fact that our warfare is accomplished. That means it is finished. When Jesus Christ said it is finished, oh, He meant what He said and He said what He meant. Amen? Amen. The plan of salvation, 
the hope of God offered to mankind through faith in the old rugged cross and the finished work there, our, war, our warfare is accomplished. It is finished. The battle is over. Oh, Amen. Amen. It is finished. There will be no more war. Hallelujah. Oh, we can find rest and comfort in that today. Knowing that Jesus Christ has paid the price for our sins and we don't have to. And it's a good thing because we couldn't even if we tried. We couldn't even if we tried. Hallelujah. So our first comfort that we looked at <coughs> was that our warfare is accomplished. The second comfort that we looked at, does anybody remember? Did you take notes? Well, the bubby wasn't here. He may have read Sister Patty's notes or watched it on YouTube. Our second comfort, and by the way, it's good to have Brother Bubby back with us this morning. Our second comfort that we found, somebody tell me what it was. The Word of God never changed. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody's listening to the teacher, amen. <laughs> and by the teacher, I mean the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The Word of God, our second comfort is the Word of God shall stand forever. Jesus himself said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Amen? Amen. The grass will wither, the flowers will die, but God's word will remain. That brings me great comfort today. Man changes his mind. Man will change his words. We were talking last week that many denominations... Because of the, the way society is today and so many different lifestyles people are choosing to, to, to live and homosexuality becoming so such, so such a prevalent thing and the way that abortion is, is rampant and such a, 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 it's, it's in the front of our political news. We've talked about how that some denominations has went into their bylaws and they have rewritten their bylaws so that it's okay for their priest or for their bishop or whoever to ordain homosexuals, to marry homosexuals. Man may go in and update his bylaws and change his rules. This don't change. Amen. This don't change. Amen? Amen. I don't have to look at it and say, well, I know that the Bible used to say that Jesus will always be with me, that he'll never leave me, that he'll never forsake me. I know that it used to say that he is merciful to all those who call out on his name and ask forgiveness. I know that it used to say that I'm saved by the blood through faith in Jesus Christ, but I better check and see if God changed it. Well, I got news for you. He didn't. Amen. 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 And he will not. And like I said, you can take every copy that we have and burn it. It still will not get rid of the Word of God. You can lock the men up that preach it. It still will not get rid of the Word of God. You can burn men at the stake to shut them up, but it still will not stop the Word of God. You can take God's men and drop them on an aisle, an old rock pile out in the middle of the ocean, and banish them there and say you'll shut them up, but God's Word will remain long after you're dead and gone. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God's word remains forever. That old wicked ruler that sent John out there and dropped him off at the Isle of Patmos as punishment as being for, because of his witness of Jesus Christ, he was dead and gone, hallelujah, and John was still preaching the gospel from the Isle of Patmos. He was still writing down what thus saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. Yep. 2,000 years later, Every man and every woman, every wicked king and every wicked ruler, every wicked queen, every every wicked prince or governor that has tried to stop the word of God, every wicked priest, every wicked higher ups in the Catholic church that tried to burn and stop the word of God from being published in the English language, they're all dead. God's word is still here this morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, Give the Lord a hand clap this morning that His Word will never change. Amen? God's Word don't change. Well, Brother Billy, we have to change because society has changed. Oh, hallelujah. God's Word will not change to line up with society. Society needs to change to line up with God's Word. Amen? Hallelujah. His Word will not change. That's a great comfort to me to know that God's Word is forever the same. The Bible says His Word is settled in heaven. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. His Word is settled. So that was the second thing. The third thing, and I was going to just give you two last week, but I couldn't stop without giving you the third one. Hallelujah. The third thing is, is that the Lord will carry His people. Oh, I needed that. 
How many times have you needed that? Amen. How many times now you can look back at hard times and troubles that you've went through and you know today that you can testify you would have not made it through it had it not been for your God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Sister Wanda, we talked about the man who had the dream about the footprints in the sand and how that he could see his life stretched out, as it were, a beach along the ocean side and how that during the good times of his life he could see two sets of footprints. He is in the Lord's. But when times got hard and times got rough and times were bad, he could only see one set of footprints. So he questioned the Lord and he said, Lord, how come when things were good I can see your footprints? You're walking with me. There's two sets of them. But when I needed you the most, I only see one set of footprints. And the Lord spoke to to him and said, my dear child, uh, there's only one set of footprints, but those footprints aren't yours. Uh, I was carrying you, hallelujah, at the times that you needed me the most. Aren't you glad this morning that God will carry you uh, when you can't walk yourself, uh, when you have no strength yourself, uh, when you're wounded uh, like a lamb that the shepherd would go out uh, and find with a, with, with a wound or with an injury, unable to walk for himself, uh, unable to find his way, uh, and he would pick up the little lamb and he would hold it and he would carry it back to the fold heavenly what a comfort it is to know today that you can say Lord I can't put one foot in front of the other but I'm trusting you to carry me through I can't go through this valley on my own but I'm trusting you to carry me through I can't walk through this fire alone but I'm trusting you to carry me through Amen. 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 oh I wish I could preach this morning you can find the scriptures that go with all of these within the scriptures, within the passages here in Isaiah 40. I'll read you this one about him carrying his people. Is verse number 11. 40 and 11 says, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. He'll carry us. Amen. Amen. He'll carry us. He will carry us. And on that second, on that second uh, comfort that we have about the Word of God remaining forever, you can find that in several of these verses, but especially verse number 8. It says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So that's the first three things that we looked at. Our warfare is accomplished. The word of God shall stand forever. And the Lord will carry us. I'm going to move on to number four. Verse 12. Now I'm not going to read all of this. Because I'm having trouble seeing my scriptures this morning but the fourth comfort that we're going to look at this morning is there is none like unto our God oh I should have got some kind of reaction from that. you see he is God and besides him there is no other he is almighty and no other is he is all powerful and no other is we, we don't have to Go searching for a God. Nope. Amen? No. Because we found. <laughs> oh, we found the one true living God this morning. And there is none like unto Him. Amen. Amen. Oh, that brings me great comfort this morning knowing there is none like unto our God. Verse 12 says, For who hath measured the waters in the hollow of His hand? Oh, isn't that beautiful? And meted out the heavens with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Oh, you're talking about a great big God. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Why should I worry? Why should I fear? Because the God that we serve today he is ever near, and He is the only God besides Him. There is no other, amen. Oh, there's some little G's out there, but there's only one big. 
G. Amen. <laughs> There's only one God, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the great God, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The I am that I am. Moses said, Whom am I going to tell old Pharaoh sent me? He said, You just tell him I am. Amen. I am greater than his gods. I am greater than anything this world has to offer. I am greater. Hallelujah. Greater is he. He is God. Besides him, there is no other. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to this. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord? Or being his counselor, have taught him. In other words, who taught God? It reminds me of the way he treated Job. He said, Job, gird up your loins like a man. I want to talk to you. Were you there when I hung the stars? Oh, hallelujah. Were you there when I hung the stars in the sky? Were you there when I formed the world out of nothing? Glory to God. I'm talking about the God that we serve. In the beginning, God said, let there be light and darkness had to get out of the way. Amen. 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 Why? Because he is God. And besides him there is no other. Every plague that he sent upon Pharaoh and the Egyptians was a smack in the face to the false gods that they worshipped. Yep. And their false gods could not deliver them. Their false gods could not deliver them. Matter of fact, I think in one place, and I might not be exactly right with this, in one place, <laughs> they tried to get their false god to take care of it and it got worse. <laughs> and that's what will happen to you if you turn to anyone or anything else other than this God that we're preaching about this morning. Things will not get better for you. Things will only get worse. What a comfort to know this morning that there is none like unto our God. I'm not going to read all this. Where did I get to? Verse 13. Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord as being his counselor? And who hath taught him? Uh, what does it say next? It says, With whom took he counsel? Who instructed him? Amen. Who was there in the beginning before God? Nobody. The Bible says, and you see, man likes to figure these things out, Sister Sharon. We like to know where things started, how things are going to end, where it began. I've had people ask me, Where'd God come from? I know it's hard for us to wrap our mind around this, but God has always been. In the beginning, God. That means he was there before the beginning. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I like that old song, if God was there before the beginning, then the victory is yours to claim, because that only means that your answer was here before the problem came. Amen? Amen. Oh, oh, hallelujah. God was here before the devil. The victory is yours to claim because that can only mean that your answer, it was here before the problem came. Before Adam and Eve ever fell in the garden, the plan of salvation had been set in place. The lamb had already agreed, had already submitted himself to the will of the Father and said, I'll go and give my life for a lost and dying world that's going to fall and have no hope. I'll be their hope. They're going to be without peace. I'll be their peace. They're going to need a Savior. I'll be their Savior. Oh, what a great God we serve this morning. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve. Do you believe it this morning? Amen. Oh, do you believe that He's God and besides Him there is no other? Amen. Look over at your neighbor and say, ain't nobody else. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, only Him. That's our fourth comfort this morning. And He is God and besides Him there is no other. Hallelujah. Drop all the way down to verse 18. To whom then will you liken God? Or who, or what likeness will you compare unto him? There is no comparison this morning. Amen. There is no 
God but God. Amen. Oh, he can take an old sinner, an old drunk. Hallelujah. And clean them up. Amen. Hallelujah. An old alcoholic can come up and bow down at an old-fashioned altar or wherever it is where he can pray and give his heart to Jesus and he can come forth a clean, sober man that has no taste for alcohol anymore. We're talking about only, only God can do such things as these. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about a God that can deliver you from homosexuality, that can deliver you from cocaine, that can deliver you from crack, that can deliver you from drugs, whatever it is your vice is, whatever it is your bondage is, whatever the hatred is the unforgiveness is there is a God hallelujah that can set you free from those things today Amen. and he is God and there is no other hallelujah you cannot liken him to anyone else amen you cannot liken him to any to anyone else and this it would do you good to read all of these things but I oh, look at verse 22 it is he that setteth upon the circle of the earth <laughs> oh, that tickles my gizzard this morning. It is he that sitteth upon the oh, hallelujah. The word of God said it is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. Hallelujah. The earth is his full footstool and the fullness thereof. We serve an almighty and an all powerful God, and he is God, and besides him, there is no other. I don't have to look for another because I found him, or he found me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. He is God. He is God. Oh, you remember, and I'm trying to hurry to get to our last point. Do you remember on Mount Carmel? Isaac used to say that made him hungry. Mount Carmel, <laughs> where Elijah faced down the prophets of Baal. And Elijah said, you build yourself an altar. And you call upon your God to see if he can supply the fire. They built themselves an altar and they called upon their fake God and they called upon their false God and nothing happened. And they became so uh, beside themselves, Brother Bubby, that they began to cut themselves and go crazy. We can get our God's attention, we'll just hurt ourselves. While Elijah sat back under the shade tree and watched, knowing the fire was not going to come. Unless they lit it themselves. That would have been strange fire. So nothing happens. Finally it's Elijah's turn and he says step aside. Fakers. Amen. He says not only am I, am I going to build this altar. Not only am I going to put a sacrifice on it. But go and get me some water. And soak it really good. Dig a trench around it and fill the trench with water. We're going to see who, God, who is God and who ain't. He didn't have to cut himself. He didn't have to do some kind of enchantments and some kind of war dance. He just knelt down and prayed for the God of heaven to show them who he was. And the Bible says the fire came down. It, just, it consumed the sacrifice. It consumed the altar. It licked up the water that was in the ditch. Amen. 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 And the people that saw it begin to chant, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. He is God today. He is our God. And besides Him, there is no other. Amen. Besides Him, there is no other. Oh, somebody said, let's move on. Yeah. Hallelujah. When Jim's ready. <laughs> Verse 25 says, To whom then... Will we liken him, or shall I, or shall, or shall I be equal? Did I read that right? Saith the Holy One. Yeah. To whom then shall ye liken me? To whom then shall ye liken me, or shall I be equal? In other words, God is saying, "Who do you think it is that measures up to my power?" Amen. Who do you think it is? Oh, there is no God but God. I know this is true. Amen. Hallelujah. That's our fourth comfort. Oh, I'd, I'd, I'd love to read all the rest of this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. Number five. The Lord gives us strength. 
the Lord gives us strength. Uh, number one, our warfare is accomplished. Number two, God's word doesn't change. Number three, he will carry his people. Number four, God is God. There is no other. And number five, the Lord gives us strength. Listen to this, verse 29. He giveth power to them that have no might. He increases strength. When you don't have strength to go on any farther. Brother Jim, when you feel like the press is just pushing and holding you back and you don't have the strength to press on through, you can say, Lord, give me strength. You can say, Lord, you are my strength. Amen. In my weakness, uh, your strength is made strong. You are made known to me. You will give me strength to walk, uh, to put one foot in front of the other. We need his strength today. And it is a comfort. It is a promise that he will strengthen his people. He will strengthen those that are weak. He will increase our strength. Listen to what it says in verse 30. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young man, the young men shall utterly fail. So if if the young men and the youth are gonna fail and they're gonna get weak, now he's talking about in their own strength. That's the way, that's the way, and, and I thought, had this thought come to me. If that's the way it is for the young, that's the way it is for the youth. But what's even harder on us old folks? Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Because we get weak, sure. Sister Wanda. Yep. Yep. And God knows we get weak. We need strength. We can't, we can't walk this road alone. We can't, we can't push through the press of life. We can't make it through the valley. Hallelujah. But there is a place, a refuge, a hope, a promise, a comfort today that God will strengthen His people. In our own strength, we will fail. In our own strength, Brother Bruce, we cannot make it. But that's not where the Scripture stops, is it? Verse 31 says, But... Oh, aren't you glad for the butts that are in the Bible? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But, you see, the young men may faint. The youth may faint. They may grow weary. They may grow, they may not have any strength. We today may not have strength to go on. We today may struggle at times, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk, they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They that wait. That word wait in the Hebrew means those that look to, those that hope upon, those who trust in their Lord shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. You may feel like you can't put one foot in front of the other, but but just look to the source of your hope. Look to the source of your strength. And before you know it, you'll be running through a troop and leaping over a wall. Because our God gives strength to the weary. Our God gives comfort to the brokenhearted. Our God will never leave us or forsake us. There is none other like unto our God. Hallelujah. He spoke life into existence. He can speak life into your situation. You can't. You can't, but he can't. The sooner you realize that you can't and he can, the quicker you'll quit beating your head against a brick wall. Amen? Amen. Oh, what a comfort today to know that even though the youth shall fail and falter, even though the, the, the young may be without strength and faint, those who wait upon the Lord those whose God is their hope. Those who trust in the Lord. Was it the psalmist that wrote, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of our God. <laughs> He's our source of strength, Brother Rodney. Life gets hard. Amen. There are times that we go through real struggles and we find it hard to make it through. But thank God we have a Savior who walks with us, who will carry us, 
who will give us strength in our time of weakness, who will help us to carry on when it seems like the going on is done left. He'll help us to pick up the pieces. Let him pick up the pieces. And he'll help us to go on. Hallelujah. Uh, I said this before. It may have been at one of the funerals. I preached too many funerals lately. Hallelujah. I told Reese. Uh, I told Reese that I had been praying about our finances. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, I'm willing to work for it. Then I started getting all these calls for funerals. And I told Reese, I might need to tell the Lord, be a little bit more clear with him. <laughs> uh, but one of the things about life that is so hard is death. Um, one of the hardest things about life is death. But we don't have to go through our loss alone. We don't have to go through our time of struggle. And you out there today don't have to go through whatever it is you're facing by yourself. If you'll put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, <clears throat> He never promised us that the road wouldn't get hard. But He did promise that He would go with us every step of the way. If you're out there today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I read somewhere not too long back that a preacher said we don't, we're not supposed to beg people to get saved well I'm fixing to ignore that information I beg you I plead with you today if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior turn your life over to Him before it's too late if there's one thing that every one of us in here and even those out there I'm sure every family member out there knows what I'm talking about death sometimes comes suddenly and we don't know if the next call that's being made to tell everyone that someone passed away might be us. You don't know whether you have it tomorrow or not. But you can make things right with God right now. You can say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I put my faith and my trust in what you did on the cross. I believe that you died for me, that you were buried, that you rose on the third day. That you're the only way, the only truth, and the only life. If you will put your faith in Jesus Christ today, he will save you. And there is a, there is countless treasures inside his book Amen. that are for you, given for mankind, if we will just accept him and trust in what he has said. The word of God is such a comfort. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning have something before we go.